This ECE 201 lesson is titled, How to Write Node Voltage Equations by Inspection. Now, node voltage equations traditionally arise from writing Kirchhoff's current law at each non-reference node and then using element constraints like Ohm's law to express those node currents in terms of node voltages and, for example, the known resistance values. If you have capital N nodes in the circuit, then there will be capital N minus one node voltages. If we follow the procedure I've just described at each node, one obtains capital N minus one independent equations, which we can solve for the node voltages. And of course, once you have the node voltages, then one can deduce the current and voltage for each circuit element. We can say the circuit is completely solved. However, in this lesson, we want to describe a rather different approach. We want to describe an algorithm by which one may write down the node voltage equations just by looking at the circuit and doing that directly without going through the separate constraints of KCL, element constraints, collecting terms, and so forth. The algorithm works particularly well for circuits consisting of resistors and current sources, such as the circuit we see here. And let's demonstrate it with this particular circuit. We see that it's a four node circuit, so we're going to want to pick a reference node and we're going to want to label the other nodes. Here, one of the four nodes has been selected as a reference node. It's denoted now with a ground symbol. The other three nodes have been labeled A, B, and C. We wish to obtain three independent equations that can be solved for the node voltages V sub A, V sub B, and V sub C. Now, in this algorithm, we're going to write equations with V A, V B, and V C on the left side of the equation. And at node A, notice that the quantity in front of V sub A will be positive, whereas the quantity in front of V B and V C will be negative. What goes inside those brackets? The quantity times V sub A is the sum of all conductances, in other words, one over the resistance, that have one end directly connected to node A. What goes in, term, in front of the V sub B is a quantity obtained from the resistors that have one end on node B and the other end on node A, and likewise, what goes in front of the term V sub C comes from the resistors that have one end on node A and one end on node C. On the other side of the equations, we look to see what current sources have one terminal tied directly to node A, and we obtain a quantity that comes from the algebraic sum of those current sources. And now let's see how this would play out for that particular four-node circuit we were looking at a little while ago. The numerical value in front of V sub A for the node A equation comes from those resistors that have one end directly connected to node A. That's the 2 ohm resistor and the 1 ohm resistor. So we have 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 2 ohm, or 1.5 Siemens. The quantity in front of uh, V sub B in this equation comes from any resistors that have one end on node A and one end directly on node B. There's only one of them, in this case, a 2 ohm resistor. So we multiply V sub B by 1 over 2 ohms, or 0.5 Siemens, and notice the minus sign. Now let's consider the term in front of V sub C. This should contain all resistors that have one end on node A and one end on node C. There are none, so we enter a zero. Now one might say, well, look at that 1 ohm resistor and the 8 ohm resistor. Don't those connect A and C? The 1 ohm resistor has one end on node A and the other end on the reference node or the ground node, so it does not satisfy that criteria. Likewise for the 8 ohm, one end on the C node, one end on the ground node, it also does not belong in our equation <clears throat> at this point. Now only one term to go, that empty bracket on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Let's turn our attention to that. For that, we search the circuit and we ask, are there any current sources that have one end directly connected to node A? There is the 6.5 amp source. The arrow points toward the node, so we will enter a plus 6.5. And now we have a complete node voltage equation for node A. We obtained it using a by inspection method that automatically satisfies all the connection constraints and all the element constraints associated with that node. 
Now let's turn our attention to node B. What are the rules governing the construction of the node voltage equation at this node? First of all, note that the quantity multiplying VB now is positive for the node B equation, and the quantities multiplying VA and VC are negative. Also, the quantity for in front of the V sub B comes from those resistors directly connected to node B. The quantity that multiplies V sub A in this case comes from any resistors that are one end on node A and one end on node B. We only see one, it's the 2 ohm resistor. So the quantity that multiplies V sub A is 1 over 2 ohms or 0.5 Siemens with a minus sign. For the bracket in front of V sub C, the quantities in there depend on what resistors have one end on node B directly and one end on node C directly. Again, there's only one. In this case, it's a 4 ohm resistor. So we have 1 over 4 ohms or 0.25 Siemens, again with the minus sign. To finish the node B equation, we need to know what current sources have a terminal directly connected to node B. There's a 3 amp source that satisfies that criteria. Notice that its arrow points into the node, so we will have a positive sign. So to conclude the equation, on the right hand side of the equal sign, we enter 3 amps. And now turning our attention finally to the node C. In terms of the signs, what multiplies V sub C is positive, what multiplies V sub A and V sub B are negative. The term in front of V sub C comes from all the resistors that have one end directly connected to node C. That's the 4 ohm resistor and the 8 ohm resistor. And next we look for resistors that have one end on node A and the other end on node C. There are none. Hence, we enter a zero in our equation. There is a resistor that has one end on node B and the other end on node C, the 4 ohm resistor, and that will give us the term that goes in front of the V sub B, in this case, 1 over 4 ohms. To finish the node C equation, we're going to expect the circuit to see are there any current sources that have one end attached to node C? Yes, there's a 6.5 amp source. The arrow points away from the node, so we use a minus sign for this case. Now that we've written our three independent equations for node voltages, note that we can also write them in matrix form. This facilitates uh, solving in, by means of MATLAB and such tools. And I'd also like to just point out some things about the matrix itself that are characteristic. Look at the diagonal elements, the 1.5, the 0.75, and the 0.375. Note that they are all positive. And look at the off-diagonal elements. Note that they are all either negative or zero. These are general properties that we may expect from matrices associated with node voltage analysis when we only have independent current sources. Also note the symmetry. If you look at the diagonal line the, the off-diagonal elements represent a mirror image about that diagonal line. Again, associated with independent current sources, should we have dependent sources, as may be the case in future lessons, then these sign rules and the symmetry may not apply. But it's a good way to check our answers as long as we're dealing with circuits of the type that we've discussed today. And this concludes now our ECE 201 lesson on writing node voltages by inspection. We will end by noting that using the algorithm that we've described and demonstrated, one should be able to look at a circuit of this type and with some practice go directly from looking at the circuit to writing down the matrix equations to solve for the node voltages. So we can add this approach, this algorithm, to our toolkit for solving circuits. I think it's one that you'll find to be very useful.